is Jim here. Welcome back once again. As you see, we're doing things a little bit differently or slightly out of order, I suppose. Normally, I start the videos with pictures of the knife that I'm showing, but I kind of wanted to leave it a little bit as a surprise because I wanted you to almost feel the effect that I felt when I first unboxed this or unzippered it uh, when I first received it. This is one of those uh, rare cases where I had a pretty good idea of what I was getting. I had a certain bar um, that I was expecting it to reach, and it just it blew me away. It blew away all my expectations, and I kind of wanted you to feel the same way. So after I unzip this and show it to you real quick, then we'll go into the photographs. Uh, you can see the images that I took of this, and then we'll get into the, uh, the overview portion of this. Um, this rather generic, non-assuming little zipper pouch that many of us use when we uh, ship our, our knives to customers um, doesn't really tell you the whole story. It doesn't tell you how special this knife really is. This is from Dave Hat Custom Knives, and this is his Warncliffe model. It doesn't really have a name. He's just calling it the Warncliffe. And if you guys have any great name suggestions, please put them down in the comments below. I'm sure Dave would appreciate that. And what you're going to see here is something that is, uh, honestly, pretty damn spectacular. Not only for the material choices, which as you can see, uh, obviously a knife made for me, it's, it's you know, Damasteel and Timascus and lots of color and lots of crazy things. Uh, but it's really about the build quality and the overall design of this knife. So here it is kind of laid out. I'll show it to you very quickly and then we'll get to the photography and then we'll start the actual video. But I really wanted you to get a sense of, holy shit, how cool is this knife in person, live in the video, much in the same way I experienced it when I first opened the box. And that backspacer to me really makes the, the, the overall design of this knife so spectacular. So now... I'm going to lay this down for a second. We'll take a look at the pictures and we'll be coming right on back. Holy crap, right? Is that not just mind-blowing? All right, let's start with the basics. This is nine and a half inches long. It is a very, very large folder, even though it is fairly slim, still a very large and beefy folder. The blade length is just about three and three-quarter inches in the overall length, uh, but you'll notice here where the actual cutting edge is, that's just under three and a half inches. Beautifully done Damasteel. You're looking at Odin's Eye Damasteel. Nicely etched, nicely polished. Good job on there. Nice clean edge, as you can see right there. Uh, Damasteel being one of my absolute favorite material choices, and it is my absolute favorite uh, type of Damascus. And even though it's not the traditional type of Damascus that we're used to seeing, this is actually all one material, and you get the pattern out of that one material. Um, it doesn't suffer any of the downfalls that traditional like high carbon or even stainless Damascus does where it could possibly delaminate or separate at some point in the future or under use. It, it, that really doesn't happen with Damasteel. Um, also being all stainless steels that are in there, it's more resistant to corrosion and it takes an absolute razor's edge. And by the way, Dave has done a just a fantastic job on this edge. 
This is one of the best edges I have felt on a custom knife from pretty much anybody. And you know, edges can vary. You know, when, when we put on our edges on our grinders, we try to do them freehand. We do them on our grinders. And you know, you're not going to get that, you know, dead nuts, 22 degrees. You know, it's, it's, if you're shooting for 20 degrees, it's between 18 and 20 degrees or something like that. And everybody's going to grind theirs differently. Then you have some knife makers that for some reason still use consumer grade sharpening kits like Wicked Edge and Lansky's and stuff. And I'm not going to bother to go off into that. But just suffice it to say from maker to maker and even from knife to knife from the same maker, uh, you can have a, a bit of a deviation in the edges. And I'm going to tell you right now, this is one of the most spectacularly sharp knives uh, I've ever received from a custom maker. I'm very, very impressed with that. Uh, the frame is all titanium. And then you have the overlays, which, by the way, this is the very first time Dave has done overlays, and he did a fantastic job. The overlays are done in Timascus. Uh, the pivot collar here is Timascus. The uh, pivot collar around here is titanium. Your over travel stop for the lock bar is also Timascus. You have a hardened CPM 154 stainless steel. Um, lock up here, the uh, the lock bar insert. The oversized devil's tail pocket clip is all hand sculpted tight Timascus. And the way that he did this overlay, which is really nicely done, is he actually screwed it in from the back side and then he flamed the titanium hardware to match the Timascus. So right here you can see it, I'm pointing it out, and it's here on a, on a big screen in front of you. But I can tell you right now, when you're holding the knife and you're looking at it, you don't even see the hardware. That's a really, really cool thing. The way that he blended it, he did it, just a fantastic job. The uh, backspacer here is mirror polished, hardened CPM 154, so it can be used as a glass breaker if you needed it to. It will stand up to that. Uh, this would have looked just as good with titanium, mirror polished titanium, but uh, he did want to make it where if for some reason I ever decided to break glass with it, I could. And I, I appreciate that. All of the hardware on the knife is titanium, except for obviously the, uh, the lock bar insert, which as I mentioned is steel. So he's done a lot of beautiful things here. And I want to talk about the way that I feel this knife kind of blurs the line between the quote-unquote tactical folder and an art knife. This is, if, if you didn't look at the, all, all the different materials that were done, if the, the tail of the knife wasn't sculpted like this, if the backspacer wasn't like this, this would be pretty much what you would consider to be a tactical style folder. Picture it this way. Picture a uh, maybe a bead blasted uh, stainless steel blade, a carbon fiber inlay or overlay onto the titanium, titanium plain titanium frame lock on this side and a, and a carbon fiber clip or a titanium clip and standoffs and this would really be a tactical style knife add a little bit of jimping in a few places and boom there you go but instead what you've got and I'm gonna close it here because that's where you're really gonna see it this looks like something that you would be spending four or five thousand dollars on from a high-end art knife maker and in that I mean the way that it's been sculpted. Notice there's no there's no straight line on this knife except for the edge because it's a Warncliffe. Everything on this knife is curved. Everything is rounded. Everything is radius even. There's no straight lines on there except for the edge and yeah, I guess you could consider that a straight line right there too. So everything's done in a beautiful flowing artistic pattern. I love the shape of that frame and I love the fact that the backspacer stands up prominently from that and then extends well beyond that and it gives it a, uh, a unique flavor it gives it a unique attitude you see he fully polished the entire backspacer inside and out the blade is uh, riding on ceramic bearings now I have really only carried this knife twice uh, only because on a nicer knife like this, I really prefer to get video and photography done before I carry it and start getting it all, you know, get carry marks on it and stuff like that. So I really haven't broken it in yet, but it's still very, very smooth and very, very fast on the uh, thumb flicks. 
and I can only imagine it's going to get uh, a little bit better. I love the fact that he's got this harpoon on the Warncliffe. Adds a little bit more dimension and detail to this uh, beautiful design. Now remember, this is a very, very, very exotic version of this knife. If you're looking at it going, well, I think it's a cool design, but I really don't need all these bright colors and I don't need damage steel. This is an over-the-top variation of this knife. The majority of these knives that he has made have not been this over-the-top. So, A, you'll save money because it won't cost as much as this one did. But also, if you're not into flashy things, don't worry about that. I don't want you to look at this and go, oh, this maker is only making flashy knives, and that's not really my style. No, by all means, go over to Instagram. Go over to Dave's Instagram and take a look. I'll put the his uh, Instagram name down at the bottom because it's got underscores and crazy shit in it. Go check out what he's doing. He does fixed blades and folders. He's primarily focusing on folders now. And I promise you, everything from the most basic style and design up to the extravagant, he does everything in between. Uh, Dave has been a part-time maker for about 15 years now. And uh, he is a member of the California Knife Makers Association. We need to get him hooked up with the Knife Makers Guild. He really needs to submit some knives because uh, he would pass with flying colors. Everything about this knife is just uh, so, so, so well done. He just started doing knife shows last year. He's only done three. Uh, I know that he was planning on doing the California Custom Knife Show. So he's, he's starting to do the show circuit. He's not really out there very much. But his books are open and you can order directly from him. I love the fact that he did a couple of firsts on this. It's the first time he's done an overlay on this model. I certainly appreciate that. And as you see, he has executed it very, very well. Just a little thing like he's taken that the hard edge of that Timascus and gently broken that edge and rounded it off, dehorned it. If, uh, if you're a gun person, you've heard that term used very, very often. Um, so the edges of it are soft. They don't dig into you anywhere. And that's a detail, honestly, I think a lot of people would overlook. They would just cut it out, do all the polishing and everything, and stick it on there and be done with it. But I do notice all that extra little care that's been put into this. Even the same thing on the, uh, the, the collar around the pivot. Beautifully done. No sharp edges anywhere on there. There are no sharp edges to snag your thumb on the thumb stud. He's done a great job. Look how beautifully that's done. Just gorgeous. Great etch on that dam of steel. I always love the uh, the edge pattern on uh, on Damascus and dam of steel and San Mai. I love to see uh, how it, how it comes out on the spine of knives and on you know the edges if it's been done on a backspacer. I just think it's gorgeous. Beautiful finishing inside and out. That's another important thing to, uh, to look at. Even on the inside of the knife, everything is clean. Everything is a beautiful, very, very, very high satin. The lockup on this is fantastic. Rock solid. No lock rock. There's, there's no pivot play. Uh, when you unlock it and try to wiggle side to side, a lot of times knife makers can hide that issue with really good lockup and you're like, oh, uh, there's no wiggle. Nope. Unlock it always and feel for it. And obviously when it's locked, there's no up and down play. The, uh, the mechanics of the knife are done uh, fantastically well. And he's done a great job with all the polishing on all the parts that needed to be polished. To make Timascus and uh, to make Damasteel look good, they need to be mirror polished. And he's done a fantastic job on that. He did a great job on the, uh, the anodizing to bring out the colors. When you start seeing very pale blue and yellows, uh, that's a sign of somebody that's not very good with coloring Timascus. Those are colors that you do not really want to see in Timascus. Uh, he's brought out the rich purples and the deep blues and done so very, very well. Get another close look at the blade here. And it's really hard getting the right amount of light on all of this at one time. I apologize. Just a beautiful job all the way around. Now, when it comes to carrying this knife, uh, when, I, when I posted some pictures last night 
on Instagram. Somebody said, man, I would do dirty deeds to, to have a flipper version of this. And you guys know me. Uh, I agree. I love, 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 love flippers. That is my preference. However, there's something about this knife, and I believe it's because of the way that it's been sculpted almost as if it were an art piece, that I actually really do like it having the thumb stud. It doesn't bother me in the slightest. Obviously, I can flick it. I can open it slowly like, a, like an old Sebenza. Uh, it, it just works out for me. I like it with the thumb stud. Now, would I dislike it with a flipper tab? Probably not. I probably would really enjoy a flipper version of this knife, but I have to wonder, would it be disruptive to the flow of the design having a flipper tab sticking out, open or closed? And I have to wonder if that was a conscious decision. Everything is so nice and clean without having that. I just think all the way around, it's it's really wonderfully built. As far as carry goes, it is a little bit heavy. It is on a little bit on the larger side. This is not a knife that I would tell people is an EDC knife. As you see, the titanium used for the frame is uh, pretty thick, uh, 125 thou thick for each uh, side. So pretty, pretty thick for what people would consider to be an EDC knife. Some people have, you know, ounce limits. They won't go above four ounces on a carry knife and stuff like that. And that's fine. Everybody needs to have their personal preference. Uh, I'm certainly not uh, one to mock that. I don't mind carrying a larger, heavier knife. You guys have seen me carry larger and heavier knives than this. But... This is one that you're going to reserve for maybe special occasion carry or, you know, you're just going out somewhere. You're probably not going to carry this all day, every single day. Now, should you choose to, look at the fit in the hand. Look how big this is. And it, it just, it fully fits even a large style hand. You can choke on it, up on it if you want to. And your thumb will land right at the back of the harpoon. It's a good size knife. I can't imagine you needing a, anything any larger for any of your EDC cutting tasks. I think it's just, I think it's wild. It's a wild design and it's, it's quite a bit different than the knives that uh, typically uh, reside in my collection. Now I've mentioned before that I don't have a lot of time to do videos anymore so when you do see me do a video um, I'm being very selective. It's got to be something that wows me. It's got to be a really great knife or a really great maker or something that I'm particularly proud of having in my collection. So when you see things uploaded, you know, you see that that new upload, it says Dave Hat Custom Knives. Before even watching the video, you should be going over, checking them out on Instagram and Facebook, following them and all that, because, and then go back and watch the video, because there is a reason why I'm doing that video. Someone asked me recently in one of the Facebook knife groups, um, you know, how my attitude may have changed since I become a knife maker myself. And I said, you know what, it, it really has changed. It's affected how I do reviews. It doesn't change how critical I may be, but because it's not really, it's not good etiquette if you're a knife maker to then criticize another knife maker's work. And there's a lot of reasons for that. And one could be people could view it as, oh, you're just tearing down his work to, to make your work look better. Or you're just jealous, jealous of his talent, or you're just being too nitpicky for no reason. There are a myriad of reasons why it's a really bad idea, but mainly it's disrespectful within the brotherhood uh, of, of this particular profession. So it does change how I look at things. But here's the difference. Just because of that, you're not going to see uh, a knife that isn't worthy of praise on my channel. If I get a knife that... I would have to really start picking apart very badly like I, would, I, I used to do. I simply will not review it. So if you see a knife uploaded onto my channel, there's a reason for it. It is worth paying attention to. It is worth following that maker because they've done something or done everything uh, right. They've done it in a way that I'm appreciative of having that knife in my collection for whatever reasons it could be. Maybe it's the perfect EDC knife. Maybe it's the absolutely phenomenal edge geometry. Maybe it's uh, beauty in design. Maybe it's great fit, finish, and function. Or it could be everything. There's going to be a reason why you're going to see that knife uploaded to my channel. So it's really important to keep that in mind. So, you know, you might want to go, well, Jem's biased. 
yeah, I absolutely am these days. I have to be. So when you see a video, there's a reason for it. A lot of people say, hey, why don't you do video on so-and-so maker or so-and-so knife? And I have to politely say, no, I've handled their knives and it's not the kind of thing that I would want to come out here and start picking apart. That's not who I want to be. So if you're looking for strict, hardcore, and super critical reviews, you're going to have to go elsewhere. Uh, if you're looking for a review of a great product by a great maker for whatever various reasons, then you can trust that anything that you see on my channel is going to be just that. They, they have earned their spot under my lens. So that's just kind of, I just kind of wanted to put that out there and make people aware of uh, where I am at these days since there has been that uh, curiosity uh, going on about that. So anyway, there you have it. This is the Warncliffe uh, by Dave Hatt. I love the workmanship. I love the skill that's obviously displayed in the fitment of the components, the way the lockup feels, the action of the knife, everything about it. Uh, I, I have, I've looked and looked and looked and not seen anything about this knife that requires any kind of major changes. I mean, he's done a great job on radiusing all of the edges. Everything's comfortable in the hand. Nice, clean satin finish on all the surfaces of the titanium. It's a very nice high satin finish. Great polishing and colorization of the Timascus and of the uh, titanium. Very, very well done all the way around. I think if there was anything to be even somewhat critical of, is I probably would have taken the uh, Dana Steel to a slightly, a little bit higher of a mirror uh, before buffing it, and maybe the pattern may have been just a tiny bit sharper and more distinct, but this is uh, by no means a, uh, a bad Dana Steel blade at all. I look at it as somebody that's put in several days worth of hand polishing into Dana Steel blades myself to know what to look for, but if, if you had handed me this knife two years ago before I'd ever done any of that, I would have just been just as floored with this as any other damn steel blade because it does look really fantastic. But you know, if if you're a uh, any kind of any kind of profession you're in, once you're in that and you've learned a lot of the ins and outs, you'll find little things here and there that you go, well, I wouldn't have picked up on that a couple years ago, but now I see that teeny tiny little thing. It's nothing that's bad. It's just that you notice it because you've done that yourself. So I think overall, and I don't really do like a rating system or anything, I don't do like a, a 5 stars out of 10, um, this would be a nearly perfect knife in every respect, from the way that it functions to the beauty of the design, the nice little touches, like the, the way the backspacer has been done. I love the way everything's been rounded off, everything is gentle in the hand, there's no sharp edge on this knife anywhere, except for that ridiculously sharp cutting edge. It's just done well. And this is the kind of knife that I'm going to tell you right now is underpriced for what it is. And the reason for it is a lot of people don't know Dave yet. And that's the purpose of this video. I want people to know Dave. I want you to check out his work and I want you to reach out to him and get to know him because I'm telling you right now, this is one of those makers that when enough people get to handle and experience his work, he's going to blow up. And I'm so very thankful to have the chance uh, early on. I don't want to say early on. He's been doing this close to 15 years. But uh, early on in my experiences with him uh, to be able to get one of his knives. So now that I've done the video and I've shot the pictures, I can start carrying it again. Yay! So I'm going to start doing that right now. As soon as I turn this off, I'm going to go out and have myself a nice bit of barbecue for dinner. And this badass is going to be right in my pocket with me. So anyway, check the description down below to check out uh, Dave's Instagram, how to get to it, all that kind of good stuff. And I will see y'all on the next video.